Welcome back to Endless All, your endless source of obsession. Today we're going to be talking about super fun Finding Nemo facts you should know. All right, we got our script right here. It's written by one of our gangster writers, Hola. It's gonna be awesome. Sit back, relax, enjoy. Despite being released more than a decade ago, Finding Nemo still have a soft spot in our hearts. And we're going to reminisce over this movie by revealing some facts that you will love. Number one, the CEO of Disney thought that Finding Nemo would turn out as a failure, the CEO of Disney. Michael Eisner was Walt Disney's chief executive officer at the time the movie was released. According to him, the film will turn out as a reality check for, in his own words, a yet unchallenged Pixar. And obviously, his prediction was far from what really happened, since Finding Nemo ended up being Pixar's highest grossing film until Toy Story 3, of course. So inspirational. Number two, Finding Nemo was the first Pixar film ever shown that showed blood on screen. If you can recall, Dory gets hit by a scuba mask on the face at one point, and then blood started escaping her nose. Eventually, the smell of her blood attracted Bruce and his fellow sharks, remember that? Number three, Marlin would eventually be Nemo's mom. Let me explain. Nemo and Marlin are classified under Protandrous Hermaphrodites. This means that while they were born male, they can turn into females later in life. Because when female clownfish die, the males will turn into females to make up for the loss. Consequently, Marlin will eventually turn into a mother. I know, weird, weird. Number four, the tiggy heads in the fish tank are Pixar employees. You may have spotted the three tiki heads located in the fish tank at one point in the movie. Amazingly, these faces are caricatures of production artists Peter Sohn and Nelson Behold, and art director Ricky Nierva. And did you know that figurines of these heads are being sold online? Cool, very cool for them. They are immortalized in Finding Nemo. Number five, the population of clownfish declined after the release of the movie. We all went crazy for Nemo, but some children took it a step further and purchased actual clownfish. And because of the extreme spike in demand, their population dropped drastically. No surprise, this is the best advertising ad for clownfish ever. Number six, anti-flushing announcements were released because of Finding Nemo. In the movie, Gil claimed that all drains lead to the ocean. And while this has some truth to it, Fish will not arrive at the ocean alive once flushed. So, water treatment company JWC Environmental and Australia's Marine Aquarium Council made announcements informing the public that flushing your pet fish will most likely kill them. Don't do it. Number seven, the squawks of the seagulls were translated into multiple languages. This, this, this is a good one. Remember the scene where all the seagulls were saying mine while trying to grab Marlin and Dory? Apparently this dialogue was translated into German, Spanish, Greek, French, Portuguese, Scottish, Japanese, Serbo-Croatian, Swedish, Russian, Hebrew, Zetch, Tagalog, Farsi, and Nepalese. Okay, wow. Number eight, Pixar Easter eggs can be spotted throughout the film. The yellow pizza planet truck from Toy Story was briefly featured in the scene where Gil was formulating a plan to escape. And in the scene where Nigel, the pelican, was attacking Darla, a kid can be spotted reading a comic book. And if you look closely, the book was a Mr. Incredible comic. This was Pixar's upcoming animated movie at a time. Love that, love that. Number nine, Darla was named after the producer of Mar Monsters, Inc. Darla Anderson, an award-winning producer, has made a lot of jokes towards Andrew Stanton, the director and writer of Finding Nemo. And Darla believes that Andrew naming this character after her was a little way of getting back at him. Okay. it's a lot of power they have. Number 10. The director's overprotective nature inspired the film. Learning about the origin of every film is remarkably interesting. Andrew Stanton like Marlin in the movie, is a protective parent too. According to him, he remembers going to the park 
and worrying about his son getting injured or wounded. Santon then became preoccupied trying to protect his child and he forgot to be more present as a father. That's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Number 11, Gil was a villain in the original version of the story. Okay. With a long beak, dark colors, and a scarred face, makes sense. Gil surely fits the role of an antagonist. He does. And the creators did a great job of making him look intimidating. However, we learned that he has good intentions. I'm glad they ended up making him a good guy. Hope you did too. Number 12, the shells of the young turtles were meant to appear like Hawaiian shirts. Hmm. One of the most loved characters of the film was Crush, the chillest turtle you will ever meet. In the movie, he can be seen with a group of young turtles with interesting shells. It was revealed that this familiar pattern was that of Hawaiian shirts, flowers, and tie-dye. This is because the crew was headed to Hawaii. Fun. Number 13, Dory was meant to be male. Okay. Director Andrew Stanton revealed the original plan of Dory as a male on the audio commentary for the Finding Nemo DVD. Hmm. And he said that one day, while he was writing the script in his house, his wife was watching The Ellen Show. Amazingly, the sound of Ellen's voice was enough to change his mind. And of course, Ellen gladly accepted the role when it was offered to her. How cool is that? Number 14, the jellyfish sequence made Pixar invent a new computer system. One of the craziest but the most beautiful scenes was when Marley and Dory were surrounded with jellyfish, right? And Pixar created a computer system called Transblurrency to achieve the elegance and beauty of the jellyfish in the movie. John Lasseter, the producer, said that technically we've pushed things beyond anything Pixar has done before. Just animating fish was difficult, but our technical team has created an underwater environment that is graceful and beautiful. So cool. Number 15, the water had to be reanimated because it was too realistic. Whoa, the Pixar team is really something else, huh? They had to study and observe the underwater environments when creating the movie. And apparently they studied too well since people were not able to see the difference between real water and their animated water. How can you be so good you have to force yourself to fail? It's kind of like the uncanny valley, right? Number 16, the art team had to go through marine training prior to production. Love that. Let us talk more about this incredibly hardworking and talented team. Like what I've mentioned earlier, the team had to do a lot of research and study. Part of the educational process was taking lectures and courses on marine biology and oceanography. They even had to enroll in scuba diving classes. Number 17, the expressions of the fish were based on dogs. Have you ever seen a fish smile? Exactly. So imagine how hard it was for a team to visualize how fish would express their feelings. Eventually, they decided to observe and imply the expression of dogs. Number 18, Crush was voiced by director Andrew Stanton. Known for his laid back and chill voice, Crush remains to be one of the most iconic characters in animated film history. And for Andrew to achieve his vocal style, he recorded all his lines lying on the couch. Sadly, this is all we have for you guys today, but, but the good news is we have way more videos like this on the channel. Make sure to like and subscribe and come back every day. We have countless amounts of videos just like this. Go check out our playlist, go check out our videos. You can literally spend the entire day watching our videos. Thanks Paula for writing the script. You're awesome. Everybody have a good day. We'll see you in our next video.